Hey, everyone, and welcome back to the Weekly Awakening Podcast. It is your host, Cosmic Colleen. I'm excited to bring back an interview episode. I feel like it's been definitely probably two months, most of spring, since I've done an interview episode. But I have on with us today from L.A., Los Angeles, California, one of my friends, Karina. Say hi, Karina. Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming on the show. Um, I met... Karina, real quick, we met on TikTok, right? Yeah. Like two years ago, I think, pre when I was the hair healer before that got deleted and Cosmic Colleen came on. Yes, and that's actually when I joined TikTok. So you were like one of the first people that followed me back and I was so excited about it. I was like, oh my gosh, someone followed me back. Oh, oh my God, they, oh, that's so sweet. I didn't know that. Yeah, it, I was... I mean, it was exciting to me because to me, I was like, I looked up to you. So I was like, oh, my gosh, she's following me back. That's amazing. Oh, wow. I had no idea. Well, that makes me very happy. That is awesome. Yeah, I try to, you know, I go, I, when people follow me and I do it now, I try to, I'll just pick out people, you know, you can kind of tell in their names if they actually have a profile and I look at their stuff and I'm like, yeah, I would like to follow them too. I want to engage and, and see what's up with them. Well, that makes me happy. So what I love about Karina and Trust me on TikTok, you want to check out her daily tarot readings. She's a fantastic tarot reader, spiritual advisor, healer. Um, what else? I mean, you sell, I see all those amazing crystals you're selling. And I do readings. I'm trying to get into astrology as well. I've been studying for about two years. That's why I ask you questions here and there. I'm like, hey, I don't mean to bother you, but. Aww. Oh, I, it's never bother. I love when people ask me and I honestly feel honored. It kind of like feels weird that I'm getting to that point in my astrology career where people ask me questions. Yes, I think you're awesome. I love your dating messages. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, today I, before we got on here and she said some really awesome, uh, stuff about tarot, I was like, can you bring us a message? Like let's start out this week with a message. And do you want to bring the message you were saying? So what I was telling Colleen is that the way that I do tarot, of course, I'm a psychic, I'm a reader and all this, right? But when we do a collective read, we tend to tap into the general energy. But with that comes our own essence as readers, because we are the channel that's conveying the message. So of course, the message is going to have an essence of myself. And what I try to bring to the table, what I try to give to the world is a message of self-love, of self-healing. So tarot tells a story of your life pretty much. So the tarot will tell you a story, whether it's in your relationships with your career, with your family, with your, you know, romantic partners. So in that message, yes, I'm going to read the cards and tell people what they're saying because they do have a meaning, right? But I also try to throw in there that self-love is really the key to everything is what opens us up to opportunities and it's what's going to bring you in what you want and a lot of people a lot of clients always come to me asking am i ever going to find love am i am i ever going to be happy right and you know the message is of course you are but you need to find the love within yourself first so that you can open up to those opportunities so that you can bring in everything that you want abundance in general not just in love you know like you want to open yourself up so that you're able to see the messages and the opportunities that the universe is trying to bring your way wow spoken like a like a taurus moon a true taurus moon now (laughs) in your clients have you noticed this question just popped in my head have you noticed that the ones who maybe some people that really have a strong like projection of wanting love Do you find that they're often lacking self-love? Like that's one of the things they're lacking the most? Yes, that's actually one of the main reasons why someone would say, would I ever find love? Is my ex coming back? You know, like those questions that people have when they're very attached to something, an outcome, a person, right? It's because they're lacking going within and finding that beautiful, unconditional love that we are all born with but we tend to forget about, right? Because our conditioning, the way that we grow up, you know, like our parents, the, the things that we see, right? We we are programmed to believe that we're not worthy of love, that, we're, that we don't deserve that, you know? And when we do meet someone and we're in a relationship, um, we tend, and especially because I am a Taurus, 
um, we tend to give too much and stay there. You know, like we stay, stay. there, we stay there, and <laughs> hopes that something changes. Not recognizing that nothing's gonna change if you don't change. You know, you're not gonna get a different result by doing the same thing. So yes, a lot of people um, that come to me with those questions, I feel that the root problem. And I don't really want to call it a problem or that they're broken or anything like that, because we all have that, you know, like we all have dealt with that at some point in our lives. But I feel that um, the biggest reason for that is because they lack self-love because they're not going within and doing the healing and really seeing how great they are. You know, that's that's a big issue, I feel. And I live in myself, which is why I call myself a healer, because I, I help heal myself and through my journey i hope that i'm helping others well i know they're definitely lucky to have you that's for sure and that's what i was thinking it sounds like listening to you talk you had quite you know quite an experience with self-love yourself is there was there like a broken time in your life you know coming out of a relationship something that really broke you that you were finally forced to find that i know for a lot of people it's about like you're finally forced to find that self-love in you yeah, definitely. I feel that um, for me, the biggest lesson this life, because I do believe in yes. past life and reincarnation. So this life, I feel that my biggest lesson has been in, in romantic relationships. And um, obviously, I didn't realize that early on, but I have been in long committed relationships, hence my Taurus moon again. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so so I, I stood there and I was very stubborn and just trying to make these people love me, right? Mm -hmm. Like looking for that love because I lacked it within myself. Mm -hmm. And I feel that, you know, the, the last straw for me was my last relationship. I was with this person for about 10 years. Wow. And out of those 10 years, it, it was great. You know, it was a great relationship, you know, very loving. He is also a Leo. So a great relationship, but the last two years were very, very hard. And I stayed there because I really wanted to make it work. But I never noticed that I didn't love myself. I would always think that loving yourself was doing your hair, doing your nails, <laughs> doing your makeup, you know, like the superficial like, stuff, the outward yeah, stuff. Yeah, like, yeah, very surface level. You know, that's what I thought self-love was. Like if anyone asked me back then, do you love yourself? I would be like, of course, I think I'm great. Right. I'm a Leo. <laughs> that's the I'm Leo vibes right there. <laughs> But um, but I didn't realize it until after that relationship ended um, and I was forced to wake up to this journey because I don't know if you've heard like some of my videos where I talk about I did not grow up spiritual. I did not have uh, I didn't have that at home and I also didn't have it in like my friends or I didn't know anybody. That was so crazy. was your family just sort of not religious at all? There wasn't any of that. No, we were not religious growing up. I mean, we were Catholic, <laughs> quote unquote, you know? Yeah. So we did do, you know, going to church when there was a party. We're Mexican, so we, you know, throw big parties. And for that type of stuff, I re remember going to church, but we didn't go to church like every Sunday or anything like that. And um, so, yeah, I had no religious background. When I was in high school, I was scared of all the stuff that I've experienced throughout my life as far as far as like spiritual stuff and I couldn't or didn't understand it so I became Christian for a few years real quick is there anything that you that stands out that that freaked you out back then now it doesn't but when you were young it scared you yeah I mean I have a lot of stories but I'll tell you one so um when I was about six years old six I think we had bunk beds and um, I would sleep at the top because I'm the eldest. And there was one night where I woke up in the middle of the night and I had like that, like that paralysis. Oh, sleep paralysis. Oh, my God. Paralysis. And I saw like, I swear to God, I saw like a family of skeletons. And it was like the dad, the mom, and they had a baby. And they were like pushing the baby in the stroller and they were calling me. Oh my and God. I was like, I am not going. To, I was six years <laughs> old. I was so scared. So I couldn't scream <gasps> because I had to be yeah. paralysis. I was like, you know, I was stuck. And finally, like, I screamed, Dad. My dad comes running with his underwear and he's just like, What's going on? <laughs> and I'm like, There, there's stuff right there. 
And he's like, there's nothing there. Like you're seeing stuff. There's not, and I always had experiences like that. Wow. So when I got a little older, I just wouldn't say anything. You just, yeah, I you just stopped to... talking about it. No one's going to believe me. Yes. So I, I've had like tons of experiences like that. Wow. So, would... so you got into Christianity. So then you were kind of freaked out and you were thinking, okay, is this the opposite of God? Is this something? What am I, what's going on with me? Why can I see other worlds? Like, oh, it's the devil. It's bad stuff, right? It's like it's ghosts or it's, you know, bad spirits, whatever. So I got into Christianity, which I have no regrets about it because I felt I feel that that gave me like the foundation of a relationship with God, you know, because I do believe in God. I don't believe in God the way that a lot of people believe in God, but I believe there is, you know, something bigger than us out there. Um, so, yeah, that's the reason why I turned Christian and I turned all that stuff off, you know, during that time because I was so scared. Um, did you meet I, someone also? Like, did you meet someone and they were like, hey, come be a Christian or did you jump into that yourself? I actually, when I was in high school, we had a teacher. Okay. I, I think she was a science teacher. And she had um, Bible study like every Wednesday or something after school, and she would offer us free pizza. So oh, you were going. I was like, I'm going for the pizza. <laughs> <laughs> so once I was there, I was like, you know, this is actually nice. You know, it's a community. It's people getting together. So that's how I joined, you know, the religion. But um, because I'm so genuine and authentic and I know like it doesn't sound good for someone to say that, but I know that I am. Yes, you are. So it's great to say it. I think people should say it. <laughs> um, I, I pretty much, I read through the lines, right, of church and I was like, this is not something I want for myself. Like I could go home and pray. Yeah. I don't need to be here, you know? So that's when I kind of like straight away from the church. Yeah. But you, you held, you know, all of those, you know, or what it taught you is that belief in something greater than yourself. Like there is something definitely, that is magical. Definitely, definitely. And made my faith very strong. So even um, going through this whole like spiritual awakening, I was very adamant about no matter what I do, no matter which direction it takes me, God will always be first in my life. And my faith will always be there. So, it, you know, it doesn't matter whether I, I do witchcraft or, you know, yeah. whatever. Right. Um, that's number one for me, no matter what. What are some of your spiritual rituals now? What do you do now? If you don't mind sharing any with us. I, mean, I do a lot. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> so um, I do candle magic. You know, I, I enjoy using herbs and you know, yeah, there's books for this stuff or whatever. But the way that I started tapping into that is I literally was just meditating. And when I feel that I need to help someone or myself, for the most part, I do it for myself. Um, like if I need to open up roads, prosperity, um, wealth, you know, love, you know, stuff like that. I meditate. I think about ingredients I have in my kitchen. And that's literally what, what magic, what witchcraft is about. It's yeah. about using the stuff that you have hmm. and just putting your essence into it. You know, like it's all about your own energy. So what I tell people all the time, because, you know, people are curious and they watch TikTok or YouTube or whatever, and they try to just copy what someone is doing, is they need to be very careful because you need to be in the right state of mind mm. and have very clear and good energy to go into your workings. Yeah. Because if you're vibrating at a lower vibration, if you're like desperate and you're like, I want my boyfriend back and you're trying to cast a spell, that's the energy that you're going to put onto your spell, you know? Wow. So to me, um, I do do spells, you know, I, I enjoy it. Like I said, I do it for myself. I don't really do it for clients. Or okay. Like that. I'll do it for my friends and stuff. Um, tarot, I feel that in the beginning, I used to be like pulling cards every day because I was like so interested in it. And I was like, I just want to pull a card, ask a question, you know, yeah. every time. But I feel like I don't do that as much anymore. Well, that's probably a good way to really learn tarot too and learn it with like how you are as a tarot practitioner is just to pull, pull one every day and learn it, right? Yeah, and learn the cards. But yeah, now I feel that I just trust my intuition more and... Even when I'm doing readings for clients, I feel that I, I rather just like go with the flow, kind of like this interview. Right? Yeah. 
and you pull the cards as you go, but at some point, um, you don't really need it. You know, like it's the tool that we use to show our clients, you know, this is the message that you're getting. But once you tap into their energy, you should be able to flow with it. Yeah. And it's almost but like you connect. <laughs> I'm like, what was the question again? I you connect I'm... you connect with their energy and then it's almost like their ancestors also kind of communicate through you to them. Yes. Pretty much as their spirit guides their ancestors. You know, their spiritual team use me as a channel to convey the message. Yes. So um what I've experienced a lot, a lot with my readings is that it always goes back to childhood. Interesting, Even if the yeah. person is like, is my ex coming back? Like somehow they always take me back, like fix this first. Yeah. And, you know, I just got to roll with it and listen and just. I think that's very interesting wrong. for a Taurus moon, though. You're going to like the beginning to the groundedness, the root chakra. You know what I mean? Right there. And then building and healing upward. I feel like yes. that feels perfect for you. Now, how did you get into tarot? Were you drawn to it? Did someone hand you a tarot deck? What happened? So it, it's, it's interesting because, um, I, when I was younger, when I was like 16, 17, I don't remember. Um, I came across someone that, that read tarot and I was like, no, that's the devil. And the lady <laughs> was like, no, it's not, you know? So ever since then I had this idea, obviously with the Christianity and all that, I had this idea that it was bad, that you shouldn't do that. Right. So in 2020, um, I went to Vegas with one of my friends for like 4th of July. And when we were driving back, she was like, oh, have you ever seen like the tarot readings on YouTube? And I'm like, no, I don't listen to that stuff. And she was <laughs> like, why? So she, I was like, you know what? Fine, I guess I'll listen to one. So she's like, pick one. And it was like, it was like Leo or cancer. You know how they have yeah. like, whatever. So I picked one and I listened to it. And I was like, that makes so much sense. <laughs> and Ever since then, I became like, I need to have a tarot deck. Like, I was obsessed. I was like, I was listening to the readings every day, and I just loved it. It and called to you. It called to me. When I got my first tarot deck, I knew what to do with it. Like, wow. it was almost immediate. You know, like, yes, I needed to um, have more confidence in myself to, like, do it publicly. And I wanted to learn stuff like really well because my Virgo or I have a uh, Mercury Virgo. So I have to, I'm very detailed. You, know? yeah, you got to have, you have to make sure that they like, you need to understand all of, all of it. Very detailed. I need to have my ducks in a row before I can be like, Hey, I'm a tarot reader. Yes. So it did take me some time, you know, it took me some time for me to be comfortable, but immediately as I picked it up, it was almost as if I'd done it before. Like no. I, I knew do you think in your past life you did or one of them? Yeah, I'm sure that I've, oh, I'm, I've been told when I had past life readings, not that I've seen it for myself because I, I've done regressions for myself, but I've never seen that part of me. Um, but with other people that I've had readings with, they've all told me like, you've always been a witch. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> well, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> you've always been a witch. And then, but would you have before you picked the tarot the tarot cards up did you start to think that that you had like it seems like you always knew right i mean since you're a kid these spirits were ca calling to you did you know like yeah. am i a witch i didn't have like a name for it or yes. an understanding of what it was i couldn't be like oh my gosh i've always been spiritual not until now 2 years later that i've been doing so much i'm like oh crap i think back at those situations and i'm like I've always had this gift and I never knew about it because I was, I, I wasn't meant to, you know, it wasn't time. It wasn't time. Now. And then everything just hit me like a huge truck or something because it, it, everything just, you know, developed so quickly. And it was hard because I felt like I needed to catch up to my spirit or something. Mm. Like my physical body needed to catch up. So I did go through like, a really 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 bad dark night or a couple not just one um but I what feel did like that feel was, like what did that dark night it's in painful. it's painful because it's almost like you're shedding parts of you mm. and it's like your whole belief system is gonna crumble in front of you and you lose friends you lose 
you start to see things and people for who they are. And it's, it's hurtful. It's painful, you know, because yeah. people are not as nice. <laughs> Right. So, or when you meet people, when you're a genuine person, I know that for myself, you expect everyone to meet you at that same level of being real and raw and genuine. And so many people don't do that. Yes. And most people don't do that. Don't. And it was very hard for me to come to terms with the fact that I needed to set boundaries for myself. And even though I am so loving and so open and so giving, um, there's a time and a place. So I needed to learn that I needed to learn to like restrict myself from being so open because that, you know, it makes me vulnerable, you know, and then, and then I fall into, you know, the whole getting hurt and then falling out with people. And that's very painful. So I feel that I had to learn that and not just with relationships as far as romantic relationships, but also with friendships and it was really, really hard. I feel that um, my first dark night was the hardest, I feel. Um, I was spiraling out of control. I was drinking almost daily. Oh, wow. um, you know, I was just completely out of control. And I, the funny thing is about the drinking part, um, I've always been a heavy drinker. Like, I've always loved to party, like, drinking, drinking. Yeah. Like, if anybody asked about me, they'd be like, oh, yeah, Karina, she's the life of the party. <laughs> <laughs> one day I just stopped like I totally did. drinking mm -hmm. amazing yeah, I had that for almost two years so. <gasps> amazing so you went through all of COVID I feel like a lot of people started drinking way more unfortunately during COVID and you stopped at the beginning pretty much yeah I just gave it up I was and it wasn't anything that I planned it wasn't anything that you know, I said, oh, I want to stop for, because I, I had done that before, you know, oh, I'm going to stop for a month or, you know, I really want to get in shape or whatever, you know, but this time it was just literally cold turkey and I never picked it up again. And I'm so happy about it. I feel that it's something that needed to happen for me because like I said, I was like spiraling and it was not good for me. And I, I don't have a limit. You know, I'm not the type of person that can be like, oh, control, right? Have two drinks. No, once I have the second and the third, then I'm gone. Then you're gone. You can't stop. Then the Leo really comes. Yeah, you just go balls to the wall. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm totally like that. So I was like, I, I'm just, how, I, I know myself. How do you feel now? I feel great. I feel that, um, like, I, I don't even know how to explain like how grateful I am and how great my life feels and how much peace I have and how, you know, like we were talking about my clients, right. When they come to me and they're very like in this, like, I don't know, mindset of needing a relationship and I'm not in a relationship. I'm single, but I'm the happiest now than I've ever been. So that's kind of what I, what I want to show people, right? Like, I'm not like anti relationship. Like I love love. I yeah. love falling in love with people. I love being in relationships, but you don't need to have that in order to be happy in order to enjoy life in order to just, you know, take care of you first. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I want that for everyone. I want everyone to get to the state of mind that I'm in where you're just loving and enjoying life for what it is. And that stuff will come, you know, it's just people are so impatient because so impatient. And I think I don't know if you were like me prior to this, prior to my last divorce, I was like very relationship next relationship, relationship, always on this quest for that. And then when I finally was alone and and didn't want that and just filling up my cup for of self love, it was really great. There was a lot of like, it was just fun and it was and like that's what it is you fill yourself up instead of constantly because we give 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 to others you fill yourself up during the time it's scary at first right it's scary to be like oh my god and you're probably you were thinking thoughts of i'm gonna be alone forever and this is not gonna happen but that's not true yes definitely i'm with you like before i used to literally jump from one relationship to the next I feel that like one relationship was ending and I was already like talking to someone else. I was already going out with people or immediately as I would break up with someone, because also when I break up with someone, I'm done. There's yeah. no going back. There's no nothing, you know, it's done. But I start going out and because I was already so detached from that person, it's so easy to like go meet other people, start dating, do whatever. And I always did that. It was like, you always wanted to feel like a void, right? That 
you needed to feel for yourself. Yeah. So yes, I, I did that. And I honestly feel like it was my spiritual team. And with my ex, because I was not meeting anyone that I liked. You know, there was, it was so <laughs> different. And I was like, what the fuck is happening? You know, I was like, I, I'm always like this. And it's like, I couldn't connect with anyone. I would meet people and I would be like, I don't like them. After two or three days, I was like, stop calling me, please. Like, like on paper, you should like them. But once you, yeah. it just was yeah, where yeah, you got to know them for a few days. You're like, no. And I felt their energy. I was like, no, you know, I, I don't like this person. And now my phone is dry like i don't talk to anybody like but like i said i'm the happiest it's like it's so wild to me and i probably have like two friends you know that i hang yeah. with so it's it's just so different you know before i had a ton of friends because of the lifestyle that i was living and obviously i met a bunch of people because i was drunk half the time yeah um but now it's like i'm sober i'm a homebody like i go out here and there but not really I enjoy my solitude. Um, I I am actually like, please like give me some more time for myself. Like I Aww. don't to come in yet. Like yes. I really like my space and my time and just picking up and going and not having to talk to somebody about it. You know. Yes. Like, Tell them about it. yes. Like, are you okay with this? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'm just really enjoying my singlehood, and I think that it has a lot to do with the fact that I started getting into this like really long-term committed relationship since I was really young. Yeah. So I never enjoyed the freedom of being single. No. And I've, I'm watching you and you really put a lot of work into you. Not only do you put it into your physical, you put it into your soul, you put it into your mental, you put it, you know, you're always doing something for you. I'm watching you fill your cup. And that's been a beautiful process to watch in you. Thank you. I know. I, I really, I really do love myself so much. Good. That's amazing. Yeah. And it's like, and like I said, and, I, and I'm going to keep repeating it. That's what I want others to see and to know. Like you can get here too. It's, yes. It doesn't take a special person. It doesn't take, oh, just because I have these abilities. No, it's, it's literally your willpower. It's the you fighting for yourself and standing up and saying, you know what? No more. I don't, I choose happiness. I choose to wake up and be happy. I choose to not suffer anymore. You know, I choose a better life for myself. And we all can do it. It's not just about, like, women power and, you know, that type of stuff. I see everybody as equals, you know. But I just really want that for the world, you know, for everybody. Yeah. Because I feel like suffering over things that really don't matter, it's it's pretty much a waste of your time here. It's a waste you know? of your time you here. Enjoy the time that you have here. It's not... I mean, I'm 40. I'm going to be 41. Really? Yes. Wow. You look so, like 32. Thank you. Well, you know, 40 is a new 30 anyway. Yeah, that's what I say. I'm like, I'm going to be 30 forever. So a brand new <laughs> decade. So, yeah. And, and it's like, I don't know if it's because I'm closer to 50 it feels like you know <laughs> it's like you know what i'm not gonna waste life anymore <laughs> i'm not wasting that one minute being unhappy or upset or anything like that because it's really like the only person you hurt is yourself the only person in life when you really look i mean just look up at the galaxies to see how small you are and how small how small the shit you're worried about is when you think about it and it really does lead to not having a good I'm with you I'm here to have the best time I can have but what people don't realize is that it takes a lot of work you have to do a lot of work to get yourself there it takes a lot of work to maintain happiness every day in spite of what's showing up in your life it takes a lot of work to have self-love so it's not an easy it's not I didn't get there easily you didn't get there easily so if you're on the self journey path which is amazing be prepared for it to be really fucking hard and oh, you yeah. gotta put work in Hard, be prepared to cry be pre like you have to to let go of everything from the past let it go and, and in order to let it go you have to deal with it so you have to admit it to yourself that it hurt you feel that pain let it burn and then release it and yeah. i feel like that's the hardest part people are scared of the pain they're scared to deal with those things that they've never dealt with they're scared and they have a very huge misconception about what it is 
to heal your inner child. Like they feel like, oh, well, I need to go talk to my parents. No, you don't. You can do that on your own. You can forgive on your own. You can deal with that on your own. That, it doesn't mean you have to mend relationships. It doesn't mean you need to tell them anything. You can do this on your own. And I feel that that's kind of the hardest part because there's a lot of people that are very confused, you know? And then I feel that they just get more confused when they get misguided and they get all this misinformation that's out there. And that's another thing that I have a big issue with, but I don't really speak on it because it's not really my place, I guess, you know, to be fighting with people because I feel they're wrong or whatever. It's just, it's just sad, you know, to yeah. see people become more stuck it's, with the information that they're being fed. Yes. And it can be very hard to try to pe get someone to see what they absolutely won't see or refuse to look at. Exactly. Yeah. So for me, I just stay in my lane. I do what I do. And when people are ready, I feel to connect with me and to, you know, be on the same vibration as me, that's when they come to me. So, you know, I'll never reach out to people and tell them you need a reading or any of that weird stuff. No, um, I know. No, like not at all. I always I know that when people are ready, they'll show up. You yes. Know? Yes, and that's, and that's the true, as you understand, the essence of vibration, of energy. Whenever we set out with that intention, when we show up real, it will align. Oh, definitely. And you know what? Um, for me, I, all my clients have been amazing. Everyone that I connect with is, like, so full of love and, like, so open and ready to learn. And I feel very blessed because that was something that I was really scared about. I was like, oh, my gosh, what if I put myself out there and people are mean or, you know, or or they tell me you're wrong or, you know, something like that. And I've never had an experience like that. Every time I go into a reading, I'm always nervous um, because I care so much to, like, not misguide the person. But every time I'm done with the reading, it's so gratifying to me. I'm like, it, it's amazing. It's the best thing ever. So definitely. And you feel recharged, right? It's like oh, when yeah, you do that feel, energy work with like someone I else. Gave, I feel like I gave my little piece of something to the world. And it feels really good, you know, to do something good for others. So, yes, every time I, I give a reading, I feel really good about it. And, and that person does too, you know. So that's that's the whole idea of even even getting a reading if you don't leave a reading feeling better than when you showed up then that's not a good reading yeah yeah you and know? by better not just like happy just maybe feeling freer or more at peace yeah, exactly. or calm like like lift it off your shoulders you know or like you have some like a tool for you to help yourself like you have something that's gonna um help you along your journey that's gonna push you forward you know those are the feelings that you should have when you have a tarot card reading not you know feel worse about it when you get home you know it should be the the reader and i have this um this thing i say where the readers we should be like a clear cup of water right mm. me as a reader i'm a clear cup of water why i'm constantly cleansing right like i'm constantly trying to make my vibration be higher you know whatever so when someone comes to me and they come with a problem you know they have some stuff going on their cup is a little muddy so my job as a reader is to pour my clear cup into yours so that i can clear up some of that mud right it's not for you to come and dump your mud on me and then me feel worse and you feel worse and everybody feels like crap no it's for me to pour my cup onto yours so that you can have a clear understanding of what's going on in your life. Wow, that was incredible. What a beautiful description of that. That is, at, wow. And everyone, all your clients, your future clients, our listeners, everyone is excited um, to have you and to experience you. Now we're getting to the end of the episode. We have a little bit left, but I wanted to know if we could do for the episode, like a one card reading. I'm like, but I don't have my cards. Oh, you don't have your cards? I'm sorry. I should have told you before. Hold on. Let me see. Yeah, you can take a you can take a little break. Go yeah, grab it. Not to throw. Yeah, let's do it. I have Karina walking <laughs> around her house right now. And I get a nice tour. It looks cool. The vibrations are high. Loving the decor. That's definitely what I have. My decor. I love your decor. Uh-huh. It's so pretty. Ah, thank you. Thank you. 
Oh, now we're outside. Where in California are you? I'm taking you into um, my dungeon. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes. Is this where you do all the videos? Yes. This is the, this is your spot. Yes. Oh, I love it. And seriously, guys, on on TikTok, it's at Karina K A R I N A underscore Healer H E A L E R eleven eleven, and I'll have that you know on Instagram and everything for her. But you definitely want to check her out and get her daily readings. They are so good. Thank you. I really enjoy them. It's like it's I can so tell. And it's detailed, like you said. It's got that, you know, Mercury Virgo detail in them. <laughs> I try. I try my best to be descriptive, detail, and still give a message of love and hope. You so definitely do. So let's see. Let's see. For the weekly awakening podcast, this is our this is our reading, our collective for reading. reading. For all the listeners. Oh, we got the sun. Oh, the sun? Oh, I think that's a good one. So tell us about that. So much love. I feel like with the sun in this card in particular, I know they can't see it, but you can. Oh, it's it's a beautiful. It's a woman on a horse and she has like, like a magic stick, right? So to me, this card tells you, you know, you, you are this happiness. You are the ray of sun, you know you project that to the world you just have to make that choice for yourself you know you're you're like the magician right she has that torch with her magic and you can color the world whatever color you want to color it um we also got the two of swords so with the two of swords it talks about um a choice that you need to make and a lot of times we get stuck in our head right Mm -hmm. with the choices we need to make and we're like should i do this you're overthinking it just make a choice because either way, what's the worst that can happen, right? You're going to make the choice. If it doesn't go right for you, then you turn around and you take the other route. You know, like we have to stop overwhelming ourselves with overthinking because that only gets you stuck. And then you're always going to be stuck in the what ifs, what ifs. So this is saying stop overthinking, make that choice, because at the end of the day, you know, you have happiness and joy. And it's a choice that we make, right? Wow. I feel like, yeah, that was for the collective readers, but I feel like you just said that directly to me. I was like, I'm listening, like, oh, wait, wait. That's like exactly what I needed to hear, to be honest with you. In my own life, I've been in the last two years, I've been balancing between careers, between everything, and I do have a hard time. Once I pull the trigger, I can go full blast like a Ferrari. However, I can definitely sit in that energy of like, this way or this way? Should I do this or should I do that? Should I do that or that? Yeah, we bring a lot of conflict, mental Ooh. conflict with the five of swords at the bottom of the deck. You know, like you just create more conflict that's not even there, right? Because yes. we start to think of like the possible outcomes, like the po- the things that could go wrong, you know? So you just conflict yourself more because you stay there thinking so long. So this is telling you, no, stop doing that. Just make a choice, go with it. And you'll see when you get there, you know, like regardless, we need to make the choice and choose happiness overall. Wow. Well, oh, my God. Thank you. And you know what? I think everyone just got a glimpse into how raw and authentic you are into your chair readings because I did not prep her for this. I was just like, hey, give us a reading real quick. And she didn't have her car. She had to go to a totally different room. And you just like jumped into that and just nailed that. I mean, you have found your gift, and I'm excited to see over, hopefully, the next 20-some years, I know you even longer, how you grow and blossom in that. Of course. I mean, yes, of course we're going to stay friends forever, girl. I know. I feel it. You're not going to get rid of me. Good. No, good. I think when my TikTok got deleted and whatever, you found me, right, on Instagram or something. I feel like the next day you're like, where are you? Where'd you go? I was like, oh, my God, someone cares? I was like, oh, someone cares. (laughs) good i love your energy i think you're amazing i love your podcast um you know you know i was so excited to come on here and share this time with you because like i said i look up to you like i really love your story Uh i feel that your story is amazing like coming from the background that you've had um to where you are now and how positive you are and all your videos you portray that positivity and that happiness and that joy and I look forward to seeing your videos. Like when I see your videos, I 
automatically smile. I'm like, oh my god! Oh, I love listening to her, and it's, it just makes me feel good, you know. So I know that you do that for a lot of people, and I'm so grateful for you. Oh my god! Thank you so much for saying that. What a beautiful message. Yeah. I am so grateful for you. I really am. I just love you, and you guys have to. I'm not joking. With you. She's one of my. She says that about me. She's one of my favorite people to follow on TikTok and Instagram, and I love watching it. So tell everyone where they can find you, your website, TikTok. What do you do the most? Tell everyone the deets. Well, I do TikTok the most because I have the largest following there, and that's pretty much where I got started. So that is at Karina underscore Healer eleven eleven, and then I have an Instagram as well. And my Instagram is Whisper of the Soul um, underscore, and Whisper of the Soul is actually my website, my um, my business where I sell crystals and my readings and all that stuff. Um, hopefully in the near future, I'll be able to offer astrology as well. Yes, you will. So, you know, and always focusing on the healing aspects of, you know, humanity. Aw, thank you. Thank you again for coming on to my show and bringing so much wisdom and love and raw, authentic energy. Thanks for having me. I love you so much. Aw, thank you. Love you. Okay, guys, that was such a good episode. Let me tell you something. I love Karina, and I'm not joking. I watch her every day, and you need to follow her on TikTok if you really want to feel like the whisper of your soul, what the soul is telling you, you need to follow her. So thank you everyone for tuning in. Don't forget to find me on all social media, Cosmic Colleen with one C. And I hope everyone has a fab fabulous day.